Zephyr Manufacturing Company is a valued member of ISSA and has a proven track record of serving the industry. Today, we're going to spotlight the company and share some interesting details you might not know about. I'm pleased to welcome RJ Lindstrom. He's the president of Zephyr Manufacturing Company, and he's joining me on this episode of Straight Talk. RJ, welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah, me too. This is going to be a nice little story. So let's get right into it if you're ready. Uh, let me start with this question. Why don't you just tell us what you offer the industry and what you provide? Okay. So Zephyr is your one-stop source for quality cleaning products. We uh, manufacture and sell uh, hard floor care products, mops, brooms, brushes, squeegees, all the accessories. We want you to be able to get anything you need to clean your floor from one place. Um, we manufacture the vast majority of these products in our factory in Sedalia, Missouri. So we, um, most of what we're making are wet mops, loop mops, dust mops, uh, and pretty much anything that is sewn together. Uh, and uh, when we make those here in the U.S., instead of importing them from overseas, we add a lot of extra value to that by being able to control the quality, the size, uh, the labeling, the packaging, the lead time, uh, all of that stuff we can, we can control much faster and much better than than a lot of other people can whenever they import the product from overseas. Uh, sounds like a perfect fit in the industry. But I'll tell you this, RJ, what people like to hear about as well is some history, especially one um, like yours that goes back, what, 100 years? Uh, we are 96 years old this year. 96. You're, you're almost there. ISA says at 100, you're right behind us there. Yep. So let's do this. Why don't you tell us how Zephyr got to where it is today? Any history you'd like to share that's unique that our viewers will value? Sure. Uh, I'll try to keep it short, but with 96 years, uh, there's a lot to, to talk about and a lot to be proud of. And uh, one thing I always like to point out is we are a fourth generation family owned business uh, and statistically less than 4% of businesses make it to the fourth generation uh, and so few make it to the fifth generation that they don't even have statistics on those. So uh, we're we're in a pretty select group of family businesses right now. Uh, my great grandfather started the company in 1927 as the Acme Broom Company in uh, Kansas City, and shortly after that moved to Sedalia, Missouri in 1932. Uh, and then in the in the 1940s, we actually added uh, a mop line in addition to winding natural corn brooms. And uh, we did this, one, it was a, a extra line of products that we could offer our customers. But two, it was also during World War II, uh, where it was very difficult to hire men to make the brooms because uh, they were usually the qualified workers for that product line. Uh, but it was much easier to hire women who uh, were able to operate sewing machines. So we grew that side of the business quite a bit out of a necessity dictated by uh, the the available labor labor pool at that time. Um, so then in uh, 1946, the company changed names from Acme Broom Company to Zephyr Manufacturing. And uh, then in 1957, my grandfather, Bob Lindstrom, took over the company and he ran it for about 25 years. And in 1982, my dad, John, took over the business. And in the 80s and 90s, we acquired quite a few businesses and assets of other companies uh, and uh, forced us to uh, expand the, the footprint of our building, move buildings to a much larger facility here in Sedalia uh, and grew that way. And then in 1998 um, was kind of the end of an era when NAFTA came on, it eliminated some tariffs that made our brooms made in the U.S. Uh, uncompetitive against the brooms coming out of Mexico. So we stopped making brooms and focused on um, selling brooms that were made from Mexico and then manufacturing the mops like we do today. Um, I came to work for the family business in 2008, took over in 2011, and then in 2017, we bought the assets of a uh, company, Little Rock Broomworks, out of Arkansas. And the neat part about that is they uh, were still making one type of corn broom called the Airlight. 
uh, and had a very strong customer base for that. So when we purchased them, we were able to continue to manufacture that broom here in Sedalia. So after uh, 20 years of not making any brooms, we we added it back to what we offer our customers as a made in the USA broom. Um, and then, as I said before, this year marks our 96th year in business. You know, RJ, if I had to choose a word, I'd say pivot would fit your <laughs> company. Challenges happen, especially over 96 years. And mm -hmm. with NAFTA and what you mentioned there, and then the opportunity with the company in Arkansas, you pivoted, you found a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what you, you have to be able to learn and adapt over that long of a time frame. And it works because you, you've been around for such a long time and successful. So thank you for sharing those details. I do think that those watching would like to know maybe what type of advancements in technology has helped you. Because it's not just about, you know, what you do, but what you use. Yeah. And what you yeah so mops and brooms uh, have been manufactured the same way for a very long time. Uh, and there hasn't been a lot of advancement in the technology on the manufacturing side. Uh, but recently, there there have been uh, a couple of things that have come up that we're very excited about, uh, opportunities for automated equipment to help make our products. But it took 100 years of, of making mops before they figured out how to uh, to make a robot make it, uh, you know, faster. So a lot of the technology advancements that affected us are uh, have to do with uh, communications and marketing uh, you know, the it's a whole different world now than it was before the Internet and email and social media and all of these ways to market and communicate with customers uh, that we kind of take for granted now. They've been around long enough. Um, but those those advancements in technology really let you communicate how you want to and to the people you want to communicate with out in the marketplace. And there's really no excuse not to be able to find your target customers uh, out there because they can drill down on social media to find the right people that that are interested in your type of products. Very true. Very true. And good um, use of what you found that works to help your company along and be successful. How long have you been with Zephyr? When did you come on board? Uh, 2008. 2008. Okay. So you've been there a few years. Talk to us about what it was like to come on with the company when you joined. I know mm -hmm. it's a family business, but still, you have a background somewhere else doing something else, I'm sure. So speak to yes. that and what surprised you the most about your journey with Zephyr? Sure. So uh, my journey started before college. Uh, my dad actually told me that uh, I had to go to college. I had to get a degree in something that I liked and get a job that I wanted after school because under no circumstance was he going to hire me whenever I graduated college. There, there was not a job at the family business. You have to do your own thing. And he wanted to make sure um, when the opportunity came up that it's what I wanted, not that it was just the easy solution after college. Um, but it, it also served as, you know, I worked for another company in, for three years in St. Louis. And when I did come back and work for the family business, I brought all of that knowledge uh, and kind of other ways of doing business and other ways of doing things. Uh, I brought that back to Zephyr, uh, and which is very important because... Uh, over the years, my dad had witnessed quite a few other family businesses in our industry go out of out of business because their family only knew how to run the business like it had always been run. Uh, and with no outside influence, things uh, like you said earlier, they weren't able to pivot because they didn't know how to. So getting that experience outside of the company really uh, served me and the business quite well uh, over the years. Um, so when I when I came back and worked for the family business, uh, I had actually knew surprisingly little about it because uh, I didn't work in the factory growing up. So I uh, I did every job that we have. I worked in every line in the factory. I worked in shipping and receiving. I did sales, customer service. I worked every job in the office. Um, all of that before we even talked about me, you know, becoming president and running the company. So I knew everything that made the company tick and what made us special and how we did things and 
how a decision from my office would affect somebody in shipping and somebody on the manufacturing floor uh, that actually has to do what I promised uh, a customer <laughs> that we would do. Uh, and it, it re that really helped me out a lot as well. Um, maybe the most surprising thing about the whole journey was kind of realizing how big of a scope uh, the company had whenever I, whenever I came in, you know, from a, from a child's a kid's perspective, you know it's a it's your parents it's their company it's small it's local it's just here in Sedalia, and then I get in and we have a international supply chain and and international customers and we ship all over the country, uh, and you have to be knowledgeable on how to bring raw materials and products in from uh, from Asia and other parts of the world and uh that's i just wasn't really expecting uh the size and the scope of our operation whenever you think you know coming in that it's a pretty small family business that's just in rural missouri you know rj i love that i love your story because i have to think most young people men or women as they're maybe elementary school high school they're going to be in the family business. They just expect a natural, easy transition. You were told no. <laughs> yep. So when did you when did you know that was going to be th that way? Was it early on or when you got into? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He he told us that like uh, he even framed it like uh, there may not even be a job ever, you know. So he really really wanted us to do something. Um, outside of the family business. And I have a sister who uh, got the same, the same speech and story and she likes what she's doing so much that she didn't even, she did not want to come work for the family business. So, you yeah. know, it, we kind of got both sides of that, that story from, from our experience. Yeah. Well, your father sounds very interesting and a, a, and a fair person and look what's happened. You, so you did every job at the office. Mm -hmm. that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for his vision for you right. and where you're at now. So kudos to him. And I just have to think that's a big part of the success of your company and that vision. Is that something that his father did as well? Maybe some of the same reasoning? Uh, some of it. Uh, okay. I don't think it was as thoroughly uh, planned out, but my, my dad definitely um, had a completely different career before he came and worked for the family business. He was a, an engineer and worked for a car company, uh, in Detroit for, for a number of years before he came back and, uh, nothing, nothing like manufacturing, uh, mops and brooms and that sort of thing. So I okay. think he learned from that experience, uh, and kind of, uh, put it into a plan, but he also did a lot of research on the, the best way to do succession planning, which, can take years and years and years to figure out the best way to do that for your, your family and your business. Yeah. Those watching this will no doubt take away something valuable here just from that experience. What a, what a great story. So, so let's talk about now with your people in the company, your team, you know, that's part of your success as well. I imagine the, mm -hmm. the folks that work for Zephyr, can you speak to company culture and how you find the very best workers or how you keep them? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, right now, uh, as we all know, finding and keeping good workers is is maybe the, the most difficult task we all have right now um, with a very tight labor market uh, and everything going on in the world. It, it does take uh, extra effort to find and keep those those workers. And, and we're no exception. We don't we don't have the secret recipe, but we are because we're a family business. Um, we we offer a culture and a workplace that's not quite like some of the, some of the other guys uh, around the area. There's a lot of large corporate manufacturing facilities in our area, and they're they tend to be rigid and uh, lots of rules and structure uh, and things that come with being part of a large company. And uh, we don't have those. Uh, and on top of that, I have an open door policy and encourage anybody from the floor. Uh, up to uh, you know management and customer service if they have a question or a concern they come and they ask me so every everybody has access to the owner of the company uh, and that kind of creates a culture that that we like and that uh, allows us to get uh, the job done right the first time instead of um, creating obstacles for people to get the job done um, and my example on on how this benefits us we we have an employee who has worked for us for 50 years 
and was actually hired by my grandfather. And so she has worked for three generations of our family in, in her time here. And you, we just wouldn't have an employee like that and several others that have been here nearly as long uh, if we didn't have the right kind of culture and if we didn't treat people the right way for the, you know, for the long run. Should have had her on this interview with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I tell her I, I, that I'm constantly talking about her, uh, uh, the example of of her tenure at the company out in public, and um, she would rather not be on a video podcast, I don't think. <laughs> I understand that completely, but what a great story. Three generations, uh, fantastic. That, that's keeping employees. That's a good example. Yep. Well, my last question, RJ, is about the future. What do you plan strategically as you think about the future and growth? So in the shorter term, uh, you know, we're knocking on the door of 100 years. And so we're already looking at how to to celebrate that and market our company as a 100-year-old family business. Because I, I, I think that's something you don't see a lot of and it's pretty special and and we're very excited about it so that that's definitely taking up some of our short term uh, uh attention but long term uh you know our industry has seen a lot of consolidation uh in every part of the supply chain from our customers our competitors and our suppliers uh, and so it's becoming more and more important to have good partners to do business with uh, in, in every in every direction from suppliers to customers. So what we do well is we take those partnerships and we help them grow. And we have top notch customer service. When you call our office, you get somebody on the phone. You don't get a phone tree. You don't have to go uh, jumping through hoops to find somebody to, to get an answer to your question. You're getting somebody on the phone that knows what they're talking about. And if they don't have the answer, they can find the answer and they'll call you right back. Um, so we take that customer service and the mentality of making sure the customer has everything they need. And we help our, our customers grow because our product category, uh, you think it's simple because it's mops and it's brooms, uh, but we sell 1,200 different items out of our factory here, uh, and about 700 of those are mops. And there's a tremendous amount of variety for customers to have to figure out what they need to sell in stock and what they should be uh, talking about with their customers. So we help them navigate that uh, and help simplify it down to something that they can handle and digest and, and grow their business with. Um, so moving forward, like I said, even more important now to make sure we have those right partnerships and uh, we're all helping each other uh, expand and grow together. Sounds like part of your a big part of your strategy is just good old fashioned customer service, take care of people, those partnerships. Uh, I agree. That's important. Mm -hmm. And we forget sometimes the basics of business. Yeah. Right. Yes, it is. It is kind of the pillar that we've we've been built on for many years. Um, mops, a lot of people think, you know, our, our mops are higher quality than, than some of the others out there. Um, but that's uh, can be hard to sell in the marketplace. But if we help them uh, strategically and help them uh, sell themselves, then then we can all win at the same time. Absolutely. Well, RJ, thank you for your time today. Great story. Uh, thank you for sharing this with the ISSA family and the larger global cleaning industry will get the story out there.